Hi, I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. Today, why has a Palestinian student visit to Auschwitz ignited so much controversy? We speak with the professor behind the trip. Our digital producer Malika Balau is bracing herself for the online feedback That's today. That's a good way to put it. Because why? Uh, because our shows on Israel and Palestine are always very heated. Absolutely. Opposing voices, and that's what we're hearing today. There's a lot of talk on whether or not the students should have gone on this trip. Sure. Uh, this tweet from Nasihan, though, sums up what many people are telling us. History itself can be a double-edged sword, and there are two sides to every story. I think we'll hear more than two sides to this story, mm -hmm. but we want to hear your voice as well. So tweet us with hashtag AJStream. So Professor Mohamed Dajani, did you hear him chuckling there in the background? Is he ready for this conversation? Professor is from Al Quds University in Jerusalem. He's also the founder of the Wasatiya movement of moderate Islam. It's great to have you here in the stream, Thank Professor. You very much. Thank you for inviting me. We will hear Thank more you. from you in just a moment. Thank you. So, now remember, you can stay in touch with the stream on Facebook. You just like the stream and post your comments and you can interact with our community about upcoming topics. So go to topics even, go to facebook.com slash AJStream. Now here are some of the hashtags that we're following. learning about the opposing side's suffering lead to reconciliation. Professor Mohammed Dajani believes that it can, which prompted him to take a group of 27 Palestinian students to visit Auschwitz Birkenau concentration camp in Poland. A heated debate has now erupted over whether the trip should have happened. Critics say that Dajani is a traitor and accuse him of normalizing relations with Israel, while some applaud him for taking an unprecedented step towards understanding the other side. The students from Al Quds University were taking part in a joint program on reconciliation and conflict resolution funded by the German Research Foundation. As part of the same study, a group of Israeli students visited a Palestinian refugee camp in Bethlehem. But why has the trip become so controversial? And how much of a role does empathy play in bringing about peace? Joining us to discuss this, we have Abdul Hadi al Ijla. He is director at the Institute for Middle East Studies in Canada. In Bethlehem, we have Antoine Saka, Deputy Director of the Holy Land Trust, that's an NGO for community empowerment. And Dr. Mazin Kumsiya is a professor at Bethlehem University. So gentlemen, it's great to have you all here in the stream. I believe personally that everybody should go to Auschwitz, go to a concentration camp. It will change the way you view a certain part of history. Professor Dejani, give us one memory, one searing memory from your trip to Auschwitz to share with our audience. Yeah, actually, uh, one of the students, when they uh, arrived there, uh, she saw a sign at the entrance of Auschwitz saying, uh, uh, work sets you free, makes you free. And then she asked about it, so I uh, asked her to go and look it up and see why it was there. So um, when she bought a book about uh, Auschwitz, she opened it and then in the uh, opening sentence it was a statement by the commander of the camp in which he said that uh, you enter here lose hope the only way you go out is through the chimneys of the crematorium so basically work does not set one free it actually it ends him so this was a learning experience for her that she would have never learned in a classroom and that was the purpose of this trip for students to learn and to advance their knowledge about uh, a very tragic uh, uh, period in our his in human history. Sure. Antoine, you've been to Auschwitz. Share one memory from your trip with us. It's a memory that's actually a continuous uh, living memory in our life, which is seeing the uh, towers, uh, the watchtowers and the uh, walls that were surrounding the camp, especially in uh, uh, Auschwitz, which is a continuous memory of our daily life as Palestinians also. 
Sure. Uh, Abdul Hadi, th there's a very specific situation that we have in Israel with Palestinians and also with Jewish Israelis about how they learn about this particular period in history. What is it that young Palestinian students would learn about the Holocaust, for instance? Can you explain that for us? Well, I mean, uh, the, the, the Holocaust in general, the Palestinian young people and the uh, school, uh, university students know about the Holocaust and know that it has been committed and it's a crime against the humanity and it doesn't have to uh, be connected and linked to political uh, sphere. Uh, but what is uh, uh, happening or what happened with the Professor Dajani and the, uh, what he called a research or educational term it has been politicized and has been taken out of its uh, humanitarian context. What do you um, mean by being I'm politicized? Can you, can you tell us more about that? Yes. Uh, myself, I visited Auschwitz and I paid tribute to the souls and, uh, of the uh, six million Jews who were killed and murdered in the Holocaust. And what I mean by politicized is that uh, co accompanying uh, a, 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 a ancestors of the survivors of the Holocaust uh, and telling uh, the story of the Holocaust and uh, presenting it as a monopoly for the Israeli and for the Zionist movement and especially for the Israeli leadership okay. are calling for a Jewish state in Israel. This is meaning linking uh, uh, what happened in Holocaust to the current Israeli uh, occupation, All which right. is Abdul Hadi, take a take a take, take a breath so that the professor can actually respond to to that criticism of politicizing history. Actually, uh, we have a, here a, a problem in the sense how Palestinians look at the Holocaust and how Jews look at the Holocaust. Uh, Palestinians look at the Holocaust and zoom at the small picture in which they compare the imprisonment there with the imprisonment uh, in Israeli jails and things like that and their daily uh, uh, experiences with the Israeli occupation. Uh, Jews look at the Holocaust and see a final solution for them, for them, for their culture, for their uh, existence, for their faith. So my role as a teacher is to help each one of them to see how the other sees it in order to bring better understanding and uh, help them uh, uh, to learn more about each other. Well, and speaking of your role well, well, as a teacher, there, there I are. I want to get the community in here because professor, these tweets are coming I, I in very I, I, fast. Abdul Hadi, take, take a breath for a moment. We, we will definitely come back to you. Let's just share the conversation around just a little so bit. So, speaking of uh, the role of a teacher, there, are, of course, as we mentioned at the top of the show, there are people who agree with this and people who say that this was not the way to do it. Rifat, on one hand, says what he was trying to do was teach his students about an important part of history. This action doesn't make him what she calls pro-apartheid. On the other hand, uh, Professor Dejani Rania tweets in, it's also crucial to address Israel's exploitation of the Holocaust to justify colonizing Palestine. And we've seen a lot of tweets like this. Was this part of the education of the students uh, uh, looking at how it could be politicized, as Rania says? Actually, that's what we were avoiding. We were avoiding to connect the present situation with the Holocaust, with what happened. And uh, what we wanted uh, to do is that for Palestinians to see what has happened and uh, to see the difference between what has happened with their Nakba so that they cannot, they do not either deny what has happened or to say what ha happened is comparable to uh, the Nakba. So it was and an just education. for our international audience, the Nakba, meaning the uh, catastrophe. 1948 uh, catastrophe or uh, disposition of the Palestinians from their homeland to establish the state of Israel. Professor Mazin. If I may, may, yeah, if I may jump in here. The problem I see here is that we are getting off the topic. I mean, why is it that when Antoine Saka and Abdel Hadi both visited Auschwitz, there was no controversy about their visits. When Edward Said, the late Professor Edward Said visited, there was no controversy about his visit. Why is it that there's a controversy about the visit to Mr. Dejani? And I think that's a very important question. I have my own explanation for this, but the, the reality of it is that the politicization happened because Mr. Dejani, there's two issues that are key to this politicization that Mr. Dejani is trying to do, which is both adopting the Zionist agenda. In, in one hand, he adopted the Zionist program, which says that basically the side that we are dealing with as Palestinians 
is the Jewish people. It's as if saying that in South Africa, the size that the black people were dealing with is the Dutch people. And so the history of Dutch suffering or Dutch wars is relevant to the question of apartheid in South Africa. And that to make peace, Mr. Dejani says, essentially, that the blacks in South Africa should acknowledge I didn't say any of this. Of I didn't story. say any of this. This, this is, is your interpretation. No, no, you said it. You said it. It's in your writings. This it's is where are here. We are talking. Uh, this is uh, yeah, this no, is sorry, what you have been finish. saying. This is what you have no, been no, saying. This is your own interpretation of your trip. Yeah, it's my it's interpretation is that. It's on the website of the visit. Why was the visit? Why was the visit co-sponsored with uh, with Tel Aviv University and Ben Gurion? That's University? a different story. You are talking it, it about. It is the same. Well, story. No, it is not. It's, it's a different story. Uh, so, so, so gentlemen, I mean, gentlemen, let, let me let me just make this clear yeah. for our international audience. So, Professor Mazin, what is the point you're making in a sentence, and then Professor Dejani can respond to it. So, so my first point was that basically it's adopting the Zionist agenda that the other side we're dealing with is the Jewish people. No, right. it's not the Jewish people. Okay, and all right. And I, you know, my grandfather's best friend in school was Jewish. We're not dealing with the Jewish people or with Jewish suffering. All right, we're okay. Let's Zionism. make this conversation manageable, okay, Professor I'll Mazin. Let's do it one at a time. <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm the professor today. <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah, because so. people misread things and they put their own they wear dark glasses and they see the uh, through these dark glasses and then they start putting in your mouth things you have not said and then they start interpreting things that you have not done I have taken students before to Oberlin College where they studied the American Democrat experience I have taken students to Antalya where they attended a conference on peace education uh -huh. so I have taken now students to Auschwitz to learn about it so I don't understand why uh, all this issue about uh, this po Jewish people or uh, you Zionism. But, or you, but you live in Israel. Are you telling well, me you genuinely, ge uh, gentlemen, me gentlemen, hold, hold tight one get minute. Me. Abdul Hadi, I know you're you, we, we will come to you. Just, just bear with me for a second. I just want to check that you genuinely don't understand the controversy living in Israel and understanding those tensions that are where you live. No, no, I understand because I know where they are coming from. All right. Yeah, uh, everything there is politics. So they uh, they don't un they mix politics with education. So they cannot see that education is something and politics is something else. And so that's sure. part of the problem. Sure. Well, I, I, our community is picking up on uh, this distinction and whether or not there is one between Zionism and uh, Judaism. So Maysoon Zayed tweeted in, it, not specific to this class trip, but in general, my opinion is, why shouldn't a Palestinian visit? Our issue is not with Israel. Our issue is with Israel, she says, not Judaism. But Abdel Hadi, we also got a tweet from a Palestinian who says, the controversy proves the Jews versus Zionist distinction is propaganda to us Palestinians. This person says there is no difference. Abdul Hadi, do you agree? And should well, there be? Well, well I, uh, first, I disagree with this uh, tweet. And I'm not sure if the tweeter or the user is a Palestinian. Maybe he could be someone else trying because the Palestinians and every Palestinian distinguish between who is a Jew and who is a Zionist. That's, that's for sure. Even uh, uh, our religious leaders distinguish between Jewish and between Zionist and Israeli and occupation that there is no need to uh, pop up such uh, 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 arguments because we all know uh, the truth and this is a fact but back to the professor Dajani argument about he, he did he, do, he doesn't want to compare the Nakba to Holocaust well I think everyone can agree that uh, the Nakba is comparable to the Holocaust in its political and social terms when six million Palestinian refugees uh, uh, are suffering until today. Can you tell me, Professor Dejani, how many child, how many children, and how many women have been eaten by the sharks and uh, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, fleeing from Syria and the, from Yarmouk camp? This is the result of the Holocaust. Uh, the this is not. Uh, what, what, what does it have to do with the Holocaust? What does it have to do with the Holocaust? What does it have to do with an exactly. educational trip to go and it, pay tribute it, to the memory exactly. of those who have died uh, vi as victims, whether Jews or not Jews, non-Jews? Exactly. So but, well, why, but do, why abuse, do you have to abuse, bring in no, no, Yarmouk? The what is happening in Yarmouk? What, no, what does it have to do with the trip to the Holocaust? Our students, when they 
they were there they saw uh, people coming delegations coming from all over the world and the question on I, their I mind myself, why is I it that we there, Palestinians do I not come not politically I went to Auschwitz but I wasn't there as a polit politically engaged program your program it is not, is why is it politically engaged it is a university engaged it is between uh, Frederick Schiller University and uh, the Tel Aviv University and uh, Ben Gurion University they are universities and uh, so it is uh, the Al-Quds University was supposed to be and then they withdrew because of the anti-normalization and uh, because they have a policy against joint projects. So that's their issue, is, that's their is policy. That's their which policy. is normalization. All right, gen okay. gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm just going to ask you, Abdul Hadi, I'm going to ask you to hold tight for a moment because this I need to get a few more voices in the conversation. I, I hear the passion that's going backwards and forwards to you. We will revisit that in a moment. Uh, we ask your students to, to join us um, and I want you to have a look on my laptop here this is an article from the Atlantic a Palestinian student defends her visit to outfits um, and this is Zaina this is one of the quotes from her article those who argue that we Palestinians should close our eyes to the reality of the Holocaust because it was the cause of our national tragedy are wrong so I think in this debate we're kind of missing maybe the voice of young people Antoine, I want to bring you into yes. the, the conversation because isn't it really critical what young people, young Palestinians, young Jewish Israelis are, are thinking about each other? Isn't this the empathy conversation that we're supposed to be having? Well, to start with all due respect, Dr. Abdel Hadi, there's a misunderstanding here and I don't really agree with you that all Palestinians are making this distinction between Zionists and Jews and Israelis even. Uh, within the growing generation, young generation I'm talking right now, there is no clear distinction between Zionists, Jews, or even Israelis, and we're putting them in the same classification. The issue of the Holocaust, if we bring it up within a group of youth Palestinians, it, it is the topic that is charged, just like we see now in this debate, where just mentioning it boils up all the emotions. It is fair that we as Palestinians, and it is a must that we as Palestinians, come to discuss the Holocaust, go to visit even the memorials or to the sites, not because we are deniers, by nature we are not deniers of the Holocaust, it's not our cause, it's not the thing that was done by our hands, it was done by Nazi German uh, military, and it is not only even the Germans guilt, it's and not the fault of the Germans, it's also the fault of 2000 years of anti-Semitism in Rome. Now, among the generation growing up here, if you speak about the Holocaust in a way that you empathize with the suffering of the souls that haven't that have fallen down there and, you're and seen as a traitor you cannot you cannot you cannot yeah. issue and not yes. politicize yeah. it and that's what my argument the, is if, yes. if it's, yeah. that, it yeah. didn't yeah. happen yeah. by yeah. our yeah. hands yeah. and by the palestinian yeah. hands yeah. then it should be yeah. we should keep it away why oh, why to link yeah. israeli and to get international fund to run these programs yeah. and to bring israeli who live in tel aviv and uh, a Palestinian who live in the Haitian camp to go to visit Auschwitz. Yeah. Why the Israelis don't oh. go and visit Dar Yassin? All right, gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm just going to put the pause button okay. on for a minute. Let Israelis about, visit about Dar Yassin. Let Israelis do whatever they want. This has nothing to do with the trip. This uh, okay, and this is what we are calling politicization. We are it's talking about students going to to visit uh, the Holocaust, to visit Auschwitz, and uh, so. If, if, why should they? Why should you add things to say? Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Uh, what does it have to do with this trip? Yeah? And it doesn't have. To, yeah, and this is a trip to advance the knowledge. Uh, so, of Antoine and Abdul Hadi, yeah, I'm going to ask you just to be uh, quiet for a moment, just for a moment, because we would like to share this with our online community. They're eager to talk to you as well. Yeah, they are. Well, Abdul Hadi, actually, there is someone online that agrees with you. Uh, this person, you mentioned Dar Yassin, the site of a mass killing. This person says, I don't find a problem with the trip, but Israeli Jews should also make an effort to see what's happening on the other side of the, what she calls, apartheid wall. Uh, on the other hand, there's the video comment. And this person is talking about empathy. I'd like all of our guests to have a listen to this. Hi. Um, I think that we should be at a state in society where this shouldn't even be considered debatable because all it essentially is is a professor organizing a school trip to a place of significant importance. All the innocent Jews killed in the Holocaust weren't responsible for the death of and the occupation of Palestine today. So why is this a big deal? If anything, the professor should be applauded for coming up with such a forward-thinking idea amid knowing the controversy it would cause. We should use this as a stepping stone for making the Nakba and the Holocaust taught in all schools in Palestine and Israel. 
Thank you. So Professor Mazin, she says it should be a stepping stone to both sides learning about each other's histories. What do you think? I, you know, there's four of us on this show. Not one of us is against visits to Auschwitz. All of us are for these kinds of visits, but in the proper context and by people individually depoliticized. Again, the problem with Mr. Dejani is he claims that this was just a normal educational trip, but it was not a normal educational trip, even with his own statements on his own website, where he says it's a way to, for mutual understanding between two sides. And well, again, okay, the two listen. sides here. So uh, what is no, the problem? No, the two sides that? here are not Jews and Palestinians. The two sides here are Zionists this who have actually collaborated. In your view, that's in your view. I'm sorry. Why no, should no, your no, view be correct and history. other views are wrong? I'm sorry, it is your but, view. but also Zionists, Zionists collaborated with the Nazis. Wow. I consider actually your views and your sub of supporting of Zionism to be anti-Semitic. Well, it's anti-Semitic because the well, Nazis actually You are mixing the so many Nazis things in your mind and no, 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 you are is, mixing X effect. with Y. Read, and so read this is Lenny not the situation. Read Lenny Brenner, yeah. Lenny Brenner, 51 documents, history of the uh, Nazi Zionist okay. collaboration. So Professor Mazin, For you to say that, that going to Auschwitz in the context of solving an issue between Israelis and Palestinians is not politicizing it. It's this simply is, this a lie. Is, you this have is, said it. This is your interpretation. This is not my interpretation. Oh, this is your interpretation. You so, so, and, so, your interpre so and your interpretation does not necessarily has to be correct. Okay, yeah, so you have your views. Wait, you are I, I, correct I, I, in your I, I, views. I have my views. And we don't need... Why should we agree on one version? You have your views, you are right in your views, and I may be right in, in no, my I'm views. Sorry, why do, why do I have to adopt I, I, your views, or you have to adopt my views? One version. Why, no can't two, we, two why can't we have two truth. views on this issue? No, no, no. So, I'm gentlemen, sorry, no I have Professor Mazin, Abdul Hadi, Antoine, Professor Dejani, I'm going to ask you to just take a pause for a moment, because there's only so much time we have in this show. The idea of empathy, the idea that understanding perhaps what the other side is thinking, that is pretty critical and that's a broader argument. That is beyond a trip. That is beyond perhaps how you want to, to work with your students and, and what's happening perhaps even in Israel. I I'm just want to go back to Abdul Hadi. That idea of empathy, is that not a start for understanding each well, other's I mean, issues? <laughs> I mean, uh, this is very, this is very sensitive issue. Speaking about empathy and tolerance at the same time, how you can teach empathy and tolerance for some people, oh Palestinians, I mean, while you are torturing them, it's somebody like teaching you empathy and tolerance while uh, hitting you in the face and right. occupying you, torturing you, arresting you. This, is, of course, will not bring. So any, for you, uh, it's too soon, Abdul Hadi. Are, 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 are you saying it's too soon? soon? Okay. All right. It, it, well, I think I mean, reconciliation, reconciliation, and uh, start when the occupation end, when the conflict end. But this will not be a solid ground for pursuing any reconciliation effort. It's better right. for Professor Dajani. Abdul Hadi Alja is director of the Institute for the Middle East Studies in Canada. He is part of our conversation. We also spoke to Professor Amazing Kumsia and also Antoine Saka. He's the deputy director of the Holy Land Trust and also Professor Mohammed Dajani. Wow, what a conversation you started, Professor. <laughs> Let's see what the online community here is saying about well, it. Well, this is from Ari Tajabra on Twitter. Without empathy, as you mentioned, Femi, mm -hmm. compassion is absolutely it's a necessary virtue in resolving conflicts in war-torn countries. Goodness, there is a lot of passion in this conversation. I know that this conversation will follow you around. Professor Dejani, thank you for coming in and talking thank about it. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Thank Appreciate you all the time of all of our guests. Let's move on to our Monday program. On the next show, Morocco's health minister has suggested that a facility known for shackling and beating its mentally ill patients should be closed. So we'll look at the challenges of respecting the rights of the mentally ill. We'll be doing that on the next AJ stream. Until then, we'll see you online. Thanks for watching. Thank you.